Martin yeah. gonna have us getting cheesecake. Um, <laughs> All right, man. Let's let's talk about this rough stuff, man. What's going on? What's going on? I yo what so Harden and Russ. I guess like this whole Houston thing is like I guess just re remodeling new coach. Dara Morey's out and whatever, but like uh, you know, I don't know what that means because now people are floating around trade James Harden. The obviously the uh, what's the Rockets coach name? Silas. Silas is saying you know. I came here to coach Russ and Harden, so we, you know, these are my guys, but he has to say that, so whatever. But now they're talking about uh, people want to trade for Russ. Harden trade stuff is out there, but let's let's talk let's talk about Westbrook real quick though. What what's the what's the deal? What are you guys thinking about? I guess the Clippers and Knicks. Um, uh, Kevin Connor, I think from the Ringer, put it out. Yeah, saying, like he didn't say officially like, oh, they're interested, but I guess he said that they have some interest interested maybe trying to put out a trade um for Russ. Not that it's not that it's gonna materialize, but um <laughs> what are you where are you guys at on this Russ thing? You wanna go first, Reem or me? Yeah, I mean what, what what it's starting to sound like, right? Because you know Westbrook's maybe well Westbrook and Harden are maybe the two most criticized basketball players, you know, ever, you know, without any flowers given back. You know, you, you could say it was LeBron or Kobe, but you know, their fans was really there but it seems like the consensus is like all right you know these guys can't win and what it's starting to feel like now with the Westbrook thing is like kind of how they did Iverson and Melo how they want to just say oh this dude washed up you can't win with him you know it's time to move on kind of thing and you know I, I think that I, I just hope it don't go that way because you know as as much as the Houston experiment didn't work out Westbrook was still all NBA he was still an all-star. And, um, you know, before the b- before the Rudy Gobert, you know, Westbrook was playing some really good ball. Um, I'd love to, you know, I know we want to just see, you know, teams win championships, but I think that there's also merit to just having a really good team and just being able to compete in, in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, it's just a bunch of different things. So, like, Reem, do you feel like Russ has a better chance of getting one by, like, sticking with Harden or, like, or trying to hoop out somewhere else? I think, you know, um, obviously they can't keep it the way it is. You know, you have two MVPs together. I think that it would have been different had they both been gelling and flowing in May rather than playing in August. Um, I, I, I think that they should take, give it another another try. Maybe, uh, you know, don't play a 5'8 guy at center. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I don't think Westbrook goes anywhere else and competes for a championship immediately unless it's the Clippers unless it's the Bucks yeah like, supposedly like the Lakers you know guys who are already contenders um but in terms of just like these two creating their own force elsewhere you know maybe Houston's the place but obviously they have a lot of work to do um on, on the GM side I mean I will say this um you know when it comes to Russ uh I like Russ I do um but Russ has to be in a specific system in order to make it work. Um, We see stars and like how, how do stars extend their careers in this league? And it's either you go to Andre Iguodala route, like I'm just going to stay in shape and I'm going to play great defense, or you go Kobe, Michael, or even to a lesser extent, Vince Carter, where it's just like, all right, well, I'm going to be a shooter. I'm going to be able to hit shots you know, when you need, I'm going to give you 38%. And I just, I struggle to see at this point as, you know, Russ, whose game depends on athleticism, um, as that athleticism continues to decline, how can he help somebody? Which is why it makes sense to me for the Clippers, but for the Knicks, if you're rebuilding, um, you've already for the last 20 years bought in how many point guards have they bought in Marbury they bought in Derrick Rose like it's just like you know how how many times are we going to do that is my thing and like my question is if you can be successful with Russell Westbrook as your best player right now and I think you can't when you say successful like you mean like championship like title contender or I mean well 
me and Reem talked about it earlier. There's a very short list of teams who should be thinking championship or bust this year. But Steve. even in a even in even in a building situation, right? Like you're the New York Knicks. So we've got we got RJ Barrett, we've got Kevin Knox, like we got like all these young guys. They buried them last year because they signed, you know, Portis and they signed Marcus Morris and they signed Julius Randle. And it's just like you came into the season with 80 power forwards and it's just like we just don't know what direction you're going in so to bring in russ right like you put russ in with this team you know you sell some tickets you know people will come to see if if they're allowed to (laughs) considering what's going on now but like from a basketball perspective i just i question what that does long term for a team that's trying to build a winner and has been trying to build a winner for the majority of our lives everybody here on this um video right here so it's just you know what are we doing here yeah i feel like the knicks like i mean it's interesting people you bring up because like chris paul is out there right now i just talked to brandon you know scooby about that like teams including the knicks are apparently interested in trying to put together deals for chris paul and chris paul just did like wonders in okc with those young guys so it's like his we all knew how good he was, but just his role as like a mentor and an, and an elder statesman on and off the floor was like on display in OKC. So now I feel like the Phoenixes, the New Yorks, like anyone's just like, man, can we get Chris Paul? Cause he's just going to get our culture right. No matter what the difference between Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook is huge. Now I feel like the Knicks, first of all, let's just be clear. The Knicks should be interested in anyone that can hoop. And I don't want to be disrespectful to like, you know, NBA players and stuff. I'm not that type of person, but the Knicks should be interested in, Anyone who's talented, they should be interested. So, like, I, you know, if they want Westbrook, I understand because he's like he's better than than who's their point guard, whoever it is. Like, so I get that they everything they should be trying to upgrade. So, and that's the yeah. Like, we're sorry, I, Dennis like, Smith Jr. We're sorry, Dennis Smith. And, and look, I, I like Dennis Smith, but like, again, <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> so it's like they really want MVP run. What they need, yeah. what they want is like MVP Russ, who they just give the ball to him, like please just get us to the playoffs. Just make us relevant. I don't know if Russ, I mean, I, I think Russ can make them relevant again. And like you said, sell tickets, but that that's, the, you know, that's just the Knicks being the Knicks. Like it, the Clippers, I would, I, I mean, I think it'd be a little strange, but I, I kind of like to see Russ on the Clippers. I think that kind of jolt would be, would be crazy for them. Yeah. Now I wonder though, if the narrative, what the narrative would be if Westbrook comes to, like hypothetically Westbrook goes to the Knicks, they get the eight seed similar to Russell Westbrook. Does he get the same praise, or do they, or do people kill him because he's not top five? He no praise for an eight. He's not nah. He's, no, he's because it's just, no. You're an MVP. It's you average a triple double. You average a triple double. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 my thing. That's my problem here, right? Because like the CP3 Russ thing, right? Like Russ, I mean uh, CP3, he like from mid range was a killer this year. He could still shoot. And, like, how do we talk about how NBA players extend their careers? Either you're going to play great defense, you're going to be Andre Iguodala, yeah, I'm going to stay in shape, I'm going to play defense, I can lock up, like, whatever, whatever. Or you're going to be able to shoot. We just saw Vince Carter do that. He extended his range, he became a catch-and-shoot guy, and that's pretty much what he was at the end of the day. So, like, with Russ, where that mid-range pull-up that he always used to have, like, that's gone. And, like, things like that, like, like where is the fit and, like, bringing a guy like that in and burying your young guys, which the Knicks already did last year. I just don't understand why you would do that. The Clippers right, make sense. Right. Or like, what you go sound, ahead, go, bro. Yeah, what, what you sound like is what everybody sounded like last year with Chris Paul. It's like, oh, why are we even Fair. bringing OKC? Fair. Like, like, I wonder, like, a year from now, if we're having this conversation again, like, I wonder if people have the same thoughts. Because, like, that's the thing with a lot of NBA players or a lot of NBA conversations in general. It's just not – like with different people, it's different. It's different conversations because that's what gets that's what gets the clicks. Like that's how I see it. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I I, I don't think the Knicks should, you know, like yeah, you know, maybe they should get Westbrook. I don't think that would be a bad move. I think that they should stay young. Um, I think that they should get demoted to the G League before anything. Um, but you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want to see Westbrook win. Yeah, it comes down to you. Like, that's why I started by because like it's it's them. Like I think I just saw a report today too. Apparently about Harden and Russ 
are like kind of iffy on things that are going on and like the future with the team. So like, are they going to try to package themselves and go somewhere else to get both of their contracts are hefty. So I don't know. I don't think that's possible, but yeah. like, I, it could be ultimately a trade for a Harden or a Russ or whatever. It comes down to Houston and what, what they say they want to do. I'm with Reem. Like, I, I don't think you just scrap that after like b- barely even a year together. And when it looked good, it looked pretty dangerous. Yeah, but they figured it out. Like you're talking about, you're talking about the Houston situation, yes? So it's just like, all right, we're going to go small. In January and February, Reem and I discussed earlier, Russ was probably the best player in the league, yeah. went on a tear. But yeah. right before shutdown, the Knicks blew them out. You know, you, you have to have a big now. Like it doesn't matter. Like if you're in the West, you can win a bunch of regular season games and things like that. But at the end of the day, you got AD and Jokic you're going to have to deal with. You have to have a big that matters. They fired D'Antoni, bro. I think, I, think they got, I think they got it. Like, they fired D'Antoni and got and Maury's out of there. Like, I think – I feel like whatever's about to happen with Houston next, that's why people are wondering, like, are y'all going to trade them? Are y'all going to, like, yeah. move? Because it's been small ball for the last, what, five years? Five, six years? Yeah. They've been yep. on the train, and it's gotten them. But so far, you still have your two horses, but – like Houston, it's gonna be interesting. Like I guess that's why the trade room is coming up right now, because like moves have already been made. Are you changing the culture totally? Are things gonna, you know, like how, how does that work? Because now you got Harden, bro. Harden came in, they brought him in to like, bro. He's been everything for them. He's done everything yeah. and more individually. Like yep. I have criticisms. People have, you know, he could he could be doing some things better, whatever, but. He's done everything he could do for them in that system, too. Like, he's thrived in whatever way he's had to play. Point guard, shooting guard, pick and roll, ISO. Like, he's, you know, he, he's done it all. So, like, now it's, like you said, build. And my thing is, bro, I'm not as big on the, on the bigs as I am forwards. Like, get you a Draymond Green, and you'll probably be good. I mean, Draymond Greens don't just fall off trees. But I'm saying, like, it doesn't – I don't think it has to be a Clint Capella. I mean, my small fives nowadays. It just can't be PJ Tucker. Yeah, I get it. My problem is Mar. Like, it's just like you can get your you you can get your guy. You can get your six eight six nine guy. Rotate the offense. You know what I mean? Like, make the right passes. But at the end of the day, I'm sorry. Like, like with the way it is right now, like the Boston Celtics are interested in Rudy Gobert, and it's just like the the reason for that is because. Like, we're seeing it consistently. Like, the Milwaukee Bucks, they wipe through the regular season because 80% of teams can't handle what they do. We're going to high pick and roll Giannis, and we're going to run you in transition. We're just going to go at the basket all day. But when you run into a team that has the personnel to be able to handle that, the Miami Heat, the Boston Celtics previously with Al Horford, um, the Raptors where they had Marc Gasol, we can build a wall. You have to have something else. You have to have something else. So it's just like, I think teams, like, you know, and specifically with Westbrook, he has to be able to help a team in that fashion. But at the end of the day, you can sag on him. That mid-range pull-up is no longer there. So, like, you have to have, like, you have to build a team. Like, this is about team at this point yeah. as far as his value. And, like, what's, that's what he does this offseason. Like, what's he, up? You got to see what he does this offseason, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like he, he might come back hitting the mid-range shots again. Well, like we talked about, he was injured. You know, he's coming off an injury. And he had the coronavirus. Yeah. Um, you know, which, um, as we've seen, can stick with you way beyond your initial diagnosis and recovery. Um, it's a respiratory illness. So, like, there's, there's definitely a chance that he comes back next year the same way or he comes back better or whatever the case may be. But, like, if you can't shoot and you can't play defense, neither of which I've seen from him this year, how can you help a championship team, especially in a situation like the Knicks, where you would be the best player? How do you succeed if Russ is your best player right now? Right. I don't, I don't, I don't, see, I don't see how that situation works. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, like you guys were saying, there's only a couple of teams I think that it would make sense to be like, okay, they're making a trade for Russ, not for the not for him to be their best player, but for to 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 add him. Like I said, the Clippers, an example where they just need like another piece, another jolt, like another spark plug, um, and that would make sense for him. I, I think it's 
completely safe to assume that a Westbrook trade would happen before a Harden trade. Yes. But again, it's on Houston. Like, look, for in return for a Westbrook, what could you get right now from a team? You know, could you get a couple role pieces? Could you get a big body? I mean, you, you could probably get some serviceable pieces, but, you know, again, that speaks to what they're trying to do with their culture. Are you going back to, right, build around one star? It's a two-star league right now. I know you talk about AD and LeBron. The, the, the big challenge with that is the big challenge. They're both 6'9 and above. They're huge. They're, they're monsters. So it's about, like, slowly but surely, people are seeing it's about size again. Like, size is starting to matter again. I get that. Yep, yep. Um, but the combination of Harden and Westbrook, just that guard combo, you can't just – you can't let that go too easily. You don't want to let it go easily, but it's just like – so you got Harden. It's like, like both of these guys – because you need two stars, bro. I, like, you like, do. You do. Out. But, like, both of, these guys, both of these guys, over, like, we've been watching these guys for almost a decade now, pretty much. And, like, both of these guys, we've seen them on, you know, separate teams. Their, their style of play, it declines in the postseason. And, like, I've talked to Remus about this before. Like, my measure of greatness is elevation in the postseason. Dwayne Wade got better. Kobe got better. Shaq got better. Michael got better. LeBron gets better. Like, all of these people get better in the postseason. And we see declines in numbers for James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And, you know, like, it's just like, and Giannis might be headed the same way. Like, he still puts up impressive numbers. But, like, you get to the postseason. Like, when you're a contender, you know you're going to win a certain amount of games in the regular season. Then you get to the postseason. And it's just like, what do we have? that can beat teams that have the defensive personnel to beat our primary option. And Russ, Harden, Giannis, they haven't been able to overcome that yet. I'm interested to see what Silas would do or whatever, or what a coach would do, because D'Antoni has been failing, not failing, but like, you know, he's just plateaued at like the conference finals, his whole great career. I think the same thing happened with like Steve Nash and Amari. You're just like, you know, you just couldn't get that extra push from him to be yeah. yeah. But I'd like – I mean, like, you just can't – You as a coach, you can't just have your offense be, all right, just 10 seconds left in the clock. Let's give it to our best player. Let's let him work. Because at that point in the playoffs, you have the best defender guarding them. You have help ready for them. So I, I, I still want to see a, a coach make an adjustment with these guys. Because the same thing happened with Michael Jordan, with Doug Collins, and then the switch to Phil Jackson. You know, a change, yeah. system, a change in offense really uh, helped Michael, you know, become Michael. Yeah. Like, I mean, just do, do, is Silas Smith that per, is he coming in with the, with the, with the sauce to say like, <laughs> you know, your, now look, yo, cause I, yo, everyone complains about Mark Jackson and stuff. Yo, bro, I saw a different style of basketball when Mark Jackson coached the Warriors and when Steve Kerr coached the Warriors. For I don't sure. care about black and white. I don't care about, like, I'm just talking about basketball. Yeah. Steve Kerr came in and had them play in a different style. What coach could come in and tell James Harden, like, yo, bro, like, I need you to make more passes than dribbles. Like, it has to be. Possible? Is that, is that going to happen ever? Like, <laughs> listen, listen, Silas could be a, a Steve Kerr for all we know. Maybe, I mean, maybe. We just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. It. We just got to see it happen. I'd love to see it. I'd but then, it. yo, it takes two things. Not to cut you off, Just. It takes two things, though, right? The star yeah. has to be willing and unselfish, that nature of Steph Curry, right? He, he's fine with moving the ball and moving because that gets him more. Like, he feeds off. That's how he plays, right? So it starts with the star. Then it's the people around the star. Klay Thompson, Andre Iguodala. Like, the, the way the Warriors constructed was by design where all of these guys are unselfish. They all understand facing, timing, movement unselfish play right we all three of us know the right way to play basketball and they had the kind of players that had that now the you know again it's it, it's not it's easier said than done to just construct that kind of roster but you do have to pursue those kind of players like nothing against Trevor Ariza and and, and PJ Tucker and Pat Bev and, and some of these guys you know like I mean I love role players like that but at the, at the end of the day you need just players that can dribble past shoot as super as simple as it sounds like focus on that and not just yeah. stand in the corner and and watch as the main guy gets a shake and, and and creates everything for everybody right yeah man you can't just be the extreme form of analytics where it's like all right we need to get the best corner shooters unless you're michael unless you're my sorry unless you're michael 
<laughs> so he made it work. Sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you, you're right, man. You need you need other guys that can go. You need former all stars, guys that could be all stars, like but just hoopers. Like like you need yeah. hoopers. Like like for it, like uh, let me just try to make this comparison. Trevor Ariza, like I think like, he's a hooper. Okay, I'm not saying he's not. He does what he do. He's good. But Trevor Ariza versus Andre Iguodala, right? Like they they're kind of the same player. But if you're really paying attention, what Andre Iguodala does the details right passing the ball making plays off the dribble just decision making right that's not what you get from trevor reason right True. so that's the, that's it's it's like most people don't really see that different than those two players are just identical to most people but if you really look at the details and what they do on the floor their effectiveness that's where the gms and stuff on teams come into play because it's like you if you understand that difference you will say no we need this guard and this forward, as opposed to just this, you know, just a body and a and a guy who can bring the ball up. Yeah, the Rockets just picked as many three and D guys as possible. You you need three and D guys that can like do other things. That can really impact the game in other ways. Iguodala is that. I mean, you don't really hit threes like that anymore. But you know, like he he was instrumental to the Miami Heat's run the, this uh, this past playoffs. Yeah, for sure. And it's just like. You know, at the end of the day, um, like we've been saying, bigs are going to start to matter again. Like we're moving away from, um, you know, like like what it was, like as far as like small ball and things like that. But like I think that we have now seen that at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you're going to have to deal with Jokic. You're going to have to deal with AD. Um, you're going to have to deal with like if MB can never stay healthy. To get over the top, you need that man in the middle. And um, I don't know where the Rockets go from here. That's a tough job. What do you do with Harden and Russ? I saw a report today that, um, you know, both of them are not sure of the franchise's trajectory going forward. And I think that's fair because none of us know what the franchise's trajectory going forward may be. But I do know that that fit is awkward. 